Nice to see you. Hi, Shallon. Nice to see you too. It's been a long, long time. <laughs> it's been a few minutes since we were in rehearsals. Yeah, at least 10. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, nice to be here. So I guess we have to ask each other some questions. I understand. Yes. For our viewing audience, we have been supplied with questions that we have not read yet because we are honorable people and we kept <laughs> our promise. And uh, so I have some questions for you and you have some questions for me. And we're going to get to these questions and we're going to be brilliant. Do you want to start with your first question? Okay, so I ask you the first question. That would be great. We could put you in the hot seat first. Okay, well, first of all, first. yeah, let's make sure everybody knows. So you are the director of Golcom. So uh, thank you very much, Ken Schwartz, for uh, thank you agreeing to work with me again. Thank you. Yes, it's a it's it's a trial, but somebody has to. Yes. So let's pick the first question. Okay. Great. So, uh, what are your feelings? Oh, about, that's already a bad question, but okay, carry on. About revisiting this play with me. Well, uh, I'm really excited to revisit this play. Uh, first of all, we don't often necessarily in the Canadian theatre get to revisit anything, even things that are really successful and audiences love and artists love to work on sometimes for a whole host of strange reasons, um, we don't get a chance to, to actually revisit. Um, so we create a lot of work and we produce a lot of works once, um, but we don't necessarily get to use the things that we learn uh, to come back and to make it an even better thing. So I'm- uh, I'm so you're saying you're excited? Uh, yes, I am. I am excited. <laughs> Uh, I'm, you know, I am excited because, uh, you know, it is it is a really to, to come back into a rehearsal period, which we did yesterday and to know that you're building on, you know, weeks of work that you've done before. In this case, we we were in rehearsals about, I guess, five, six months ago. Uh, that's that's something that doesn't happen, to, certainly to me, all that often. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, yeah, I feel terrific about it. <laughs> Great. Uh, thank so you. Okay. So now, now I get it. Right. Your turn. Okay. okay. Go for it. All right. Um, could you speak? Oh, here we go. Uh, could you speak a little bit about what inspired you? What what led you to write Gokum in the first place? Yeah. Well, uh, unfortunately, it was because of reading some really old, weird uh, colonial documents written by um, white male uh, European explorers and missionaries and, uh, and, and anthropologists. And I really felt like it was just missing, like I couldn't really hear or imagine uh, Olnu, Mi'kmaq women in like all these descriptions of, of Mi'kmaq life. Uh, and you know, sometimes I could, there was a little bit of detail about what women were, you know, were up to, but I just knew that it was through all of these lenses and, uh, and I just felt like I wanted to hear more of our stories and imagining uh, imagining their lives, the Mi'kmaq women's lives, but also what got them through some very painful or challenging uh, centuries. And so I wanted to imagine that myself and, um, and embody that myself and share that with others in the audience. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, are you ready for your next question? Yeah, probably not, but do it anyway. Okay. What parts of the story resonate with you the most personally and why? <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, right, after what I just said, this is. Yeah. This is something okay, that we, we haven't talked about. Um, wow. You know, there is a. Uh, that's, that's a hard one, but I think the youngest characters in the play really resonate with me the most because. They remind me of young people uh, today um, and the things that they're fighting for and the hope that they have for the future and all the obstacles that they're facing. There's something about the, the opt, the, sometimes, you know, the optimism and the courage that youth have in the sense mm -hmm. that they haven't necessarily <laughs> lived long enough to become jaded, <laughs> you know, that they, they have a, but 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 it's something to be so admired, you know, that optimism that things can be changed and will be changed. 
Um, and there's a lot, there's more than one character, I think, in the play that reminds me of that, especially one, but but there are two, you know, quite young characters who are who are just in some ways like optimistic, even though they might not have all the reasons to be optimistic, but they're finding them, you know, mm -hmm. um, and the courage to find optimism in situations which are 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 so difficult. Um, and I really identify with those characters in the play and and I find it instructive, you know, uh, in the same way that I find other young people instructive where I might not be so hopeful about things. And I look at people much younger than me and I go, wow, I have to I have to get some of that. <laughs> I want what they're having because um, because we can all learn from that, you know, that reacquaint ourselves with that kind of optimism. So thank you for that, because that's your play. <laughs> now it's my turn. It's now that's my... great. But I just want to make sure that I heard you. So what you identify with the most is is the young people. Uh, I think so. Yeah, because right. I secretly want to be a young person. <laughs> Sounds no, good. But I really do. I really do. They really, they really. It's yeah. and because I think the play is a really forward looking play, mm -hmm. and and those are, those young people are the people who are going to you know, they're going to make a difference. I think mm -hmm. in such a, in a really big way. Okay, my turn. All right, which one am I going to go to now? Uh, <laughs> I like this one. All right. Oh, no. What are the best and worst parts of being both the writer and performer of your own solo show? Excellent question. Can't wait for the answer. Okay. The best part is that I know what I mean always, you know, as the performer. <laughs> as the performer, I know what the writer meant, you know? Yes. So that's the best part. So as an oral storyteller, those those two things are you know woven together. They're combined. You have a story and you want to share the story. So that's the best thing. Um, the challenging thing is that there's sometimes like when we're in rehearsal or this dramaturgy mode, you know, and I'm I'm trying to like be a better actor, but yet you know writer in me is trying mm -hmm. to get the proper grammar or something, or I'm trying to answer your question of why the writer in me meant this or that. Mm. I'm trying to learn, you know, from you about like how to, you know, about this acting and it's a lot Then it becomes like a lot. So it also means that I edit every night. Like I can, you know, while we're in rehearsals, right? Yeah. So it's that I'm not memorizing lines, it's that I'm editing. I'm like, well, how can I make this even better? So yeah. it just feels like just a lot of work sometimes, like more work, but yeah. yeah. Isn't there an advantage though sometimes that you can take inspiration from what you discover on stage as well? Because oh, I've yeah, watched you, that's right, right. you know, I've watched you improvise dial, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, within your monologues on stage in ways <laughs> where you're discovering it as you go, and you yeah, and it's yeah. it, there's an ease to that. You don't have to ask anybody's permission, and you're not right. like you're not offending anybody by going, well, you know. What if I go this direction? And, yeah, uh, because that's the storyteller in me, right? Yeah, like you're up yeah. on stage, you're, you know, you're, you're changing it a little bit to feel, well, it, does this work better? And yeah. as an oral storyteller, that's the way that, you know, you, you do it and you edit yeah. by performing it over and over, sharing the story over and over, then you, then you edit. But uh, yeah. Okay. Are you ready for your next question? As I ever will be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um what's exciting to you okay so this these these questions have come from neptune okay so what's exciting to you about getting to do this show at neptune oh that's interesting uh well actually i could yeah i can answer that um okay. so i was born and raised in halifax um and uh i i did for a little while live in i lived in montreal for four years and ireland for a year but for most of my life um i've lived in nova scotia and and being born and raised in Halifax um, and being a very early enthusiastic um, uh, participant in theater, of course, you know, Neptune is uh, has been since I was uh, maybe even since I was born or shortly thereafter, been the place that you would like to have a chance to to work. And when I was a very young man, I, I in the 80s, I worked as an actor um, at, on the main stage at Neptune. But. Uh, as a director, and a director is really the one of the main things that I do in the theater. I've never had a chance to to direct at Neptune on the main stage, so uh, this is a this is kind of actually a, a big thing for me. Um, so, you know, more than thirty years into my career, I finally got that chance. Mm -hmm. um, uh, apparently, Jeremy's gone through everybody, and then I'm the <laughs> last one that's left, basically standing. <laughs> So, uh, but no, but in all honesty, it's a, it's a really lovely thing and I'm, I'm very proud and, and, and grateful to do it. 
Sounds great. Oh yeah, it's my turn now. We're yes. not very really good at this, are we? We're not really all that good. Okay, uh, the next one that I would like to ask you is, oh, well, here's a nice one. Uh, what's an experience on stage you will never forget? I already think I know what it is, but I don't know if you want to talk about it. Don't let my secrets out, Ken. I'm just saying there I is think, one I could oh. I for you to, but you, but you could pick something. I was trying to think of something else. else. Do you mean the one that happened at King's Theater? Yeah, that's exactly oh, what I'm thinking of. Kenneth Schwartz. That's my name. Don't wear it out. <laughs> okay. As long as whoever's listening doesn't tell anybody else. Yeah, no, it's just between you and I. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, so even as an oral storyteller, you, you get used to, you know, what you're tell, what you're, what the story that you're telling. And I always love to put songs into my work. That's something I've always learned is is important, like drum songs. And so for every uh, every show, I find a song, like a drum song, especially if it's a simple one, so that I can repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, so that the audience gets to learn this song or sing with me by the end. And this is something that I like to do. I did that in El Bouldieg, so I chose a song for this one. And so for, and what you never know as a performer, under those lights on that stage, uh, and it just shocked me this one day is that I was about to sing the song that we've been rehearsing for three weeks and I performed it the night before and I forgot the song. Which song was I singing? So I just made up a song uh, <laughs> and I could just imagine you laughing at me in the booth. I'm still laughing. It was so funny. Oh, <laughs> so yeah, so it's, it's, but it's such a, you know, just grounding and, and grounding thing and a humbling thing to remember that no matter how many times we practice it is that sometimes we're so in the moment or all this adrenaline, you know, as a performer on stage that we can even forget the song that we've been singing like for the show. <laughs> and amazingly, not one person in the audience would have ever known any different. That's the other fun thing about theater is that. <laughs> You know, inside the production, we can all be going, I can't believe that just happened. But nobody in the audience would know that anything different happened. It's fun. Well, as long as she is always singing, you know, and so yeah. I just, but then, you know, being, again, it goes back to the, you know, actor and the writer is that, you know, I yeah. created the concept of the words and the music. So it's like, well, I'll just start improvising. Here we go. <laughs> But yes, I wish that I had a different story for that. But that's, that's a pretty story. good one, though. I'm, that made me happy to hear it again. Mm -hmm. OK, we probably don't have a lot of time left. But um, question, what's your next gig? Oh, How my goodness. My next yeah. gig. Spill, spill well, your secrets. Uh, my next gig would be, um, I'm a, I'm pro I think, uh, very, very shortly <laughs> after uh, this production opens at Neptune, I'm producing the Merit Awards for Theatre Nova oh. Scotia. And then shortly after that, um, I'm going to be uh, getting ready to direct two productions at Two Planks in a Passion Theater in the Valley. So, which is no small feat, right? This pandemic has taught no, us that. It's no small feat for any of us. Um, why, uh, why do we get to know uh, what your next gig is? Since I got to do that, do you get to tell us that? I'm going to ask you that question right back. Is that what, on what? your questions that you were given? I prove that it's not. You're just uh, do you. Do you <laughs> What's your next gig? I want to hear you say the word gig as well. What's your next gig? <laughs> I don't even know. I lost track. Well, I'm going to do another remount of Gotham. Oh, yes, that's right. That's right. Hey, Ken, uh, would, am you, I going to be would involved you direct in me for that? Yeah, I guess. Okay. So is that also another next yeah, gig that's for a you? Gig. Yeah, that's okay. a gig. You should say where it's going to be. Where is it going to be? Ship's company. We're, but please come see it at Neptune. Oh and yeah. Then after that, also then come to Ships Theater Company. Yeah. <laughs> to Ships Company Theater in Paris, where yeah, that's going to be after uh, our run in Halifax. That's right. Uh, for yeah. For, so for, that really uh, is for my next gig. I think we are at time. So thank you so yeah. much uh, for those insightful, moving, <laughs> entertaining questions. <laughs> yeah, you too. You too. To whoever uh, gave them to us, I guess uh, Neptune Theater and. Um, <laughs> Uh, but we should say, before we let each other go, uh, that Gokum is being performed at Neptune Theatre, uh, and it's running in April, between April 5th and the 17th. 
-huh. And I believe April 5th is a pay what you can. And uh, we are very much looking forward to being there. Yes. Right, yes, we are. I'm looking very forward to it all. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Shallon. I'll see you very, very soon. <laughs> see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.